most of us wake up and there's no plan for it like i'm up i know i'm going to work when i come back from work i have time i'll just sit watch tv one or two things and sleep that's not how it's supposed to be you should be intentional about every single thing you're doing sometimes you look at the life of successful people and you're like how is this person able to go to work and then they come back and go to gym and then have time to read and do this and do that and they become see it's all about planning you need to plan it we all have 24 hours hello guys welcome to yet another exciting episode on your favorite podcast in the whole world mandem bro today we are talking about things we wish we knew before we became adults mm-hmm. adulthood is a scam <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously though i think this is going to be a very exciting conversation i think there should be a special course in school for kids like preparing for adulthood yeah maybe when you're like 17 17ish <laughs> people are fathers by 15 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so let's get right into it. Mm-hmm. So the first point we have here is financial literacy is key. True. Like, you should learn about it. You should learn about money. Learn about money. Finances. How money mm-hmm. works. Mm-hmm. How money grows. Mm-hmm. How money flies. <laughs> yeah, like in, in our local dialect, there's something like Sikawa and Tabai. Yeah. You say you should, you should learn about savings, mm-hmm. budgeting, mm-hmm. investment. Mm-hmm. All of these bit because without that, that that is why sometimes eh, sometimes like you are not poor, you are not poor. Making money has never been the issue. No. But keeping but the money managing it. Managing the money. And that's that's where the yeah. issue comes in. So the the thing about financial literacy has, has got branches. So savings. Yeah. When to save. Yeah. And when not to save. People, there are people who grew up in homes where you tell them, whatever money you get, put it in a bank. That is your yep. safest way of managing your money. Yep. That is the perception. So the person doesn't do any investment. Mm. So it's good advice that you save money, but the person doesn't have the further advice that that savings need to be turned into another stream of income. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And there are people who have no idea about savings. Mm. There are people who know about investments in the wrong way. They learn it not from their parents, but from friends. Like mm. risking uh, um, Inve- bets, risky bets invest- <laughs> investment. So <laughs> my sister called me, and uh, one of my sisters she called me, and she was like, "I heard about this new investment, this, this, and that." And I've had that experience in school. Mm. I've been scammed from that <laughs> investment. A similar <laughs> thing. They've just rebranded it. Yeah. So I told her this thing. You're going to lose your money. Like when you invest into this investment you're talking about, yeah. you will lose the money. And she told me, oh, this is genuine. Some of my friends are doing it. I told her, how long has it been running? Because most times those who stand to benefit are the ones who enter. And you know, are, yeah, 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 right at the start. But yeah. she was still persistent. I told her, okay, I want you to learn. So I assure you, you're going to lose your money. Make sure you don't invest a lot. Too much, yeah. Because it's my money. Mm-hmm. The money I'm giving to you for pocket money, it's, that's what you're <laughs> going to use. And when you a lot, uh, you lose it, you come back to me. So make sure you don't invest a lot. And then two weeks, come and give me feedback. In one week, she told me that. <laughs> she <laughs> lost the money too. So sometimes you yeah. have to give them that exposure. Let them do it. But you should guide them yeah. how to manage that money and how to be able to... like buy mutual funds you know those kind of things they are there's a, a millionaire i've forgotten her name that says her mother's boyfriend or a stepdad gave taught him how to invest and now yeah. he's, he's very rich you know absolutely yeah so and i think another part of um finances i'll talk about is debts managing debts, debts. Yeah. like you really have to for example say in the in this uk where mm-hmm. You've got access to credit cards mm-hmm. and you need things you just see if you're not very careful yeah you end up incurring huge amounts of debt that you would spend money that could have been used for something good to repay those debts some people are literally in a cycle of debt; they just pay move on and move on yeah and it's quite good to also know about money to prepare you for retirement and like we said that would be not just not banking 
all of your money sitting there in an account just relaxing with 1% interest after mm. one year. Mm. Find a business. Find something that you can push them. So money it comes into, it comes with you know, nurturing. And, and it's not only about back. teaching your child morals, yeah. but these these things that have to do with like money that mm-hmm. we are talking about is very necessary. Absolutely. You are you are you have a very poor financial status. It doesn't yep. mean that your child will grow to become a poor person or yeah. wouldn't be as worthy as you are. Prepare them, tell them the mistakes that you did with yes. managing your finances, what you've learned, mm. impart them so they don't make the same mistakes that you've done. Sometimes you don't have the knowledge about the money mm-hmm. because yourself, you are not financially literate like that. Mm-hmm. But tell them about the mistakes. Once you tell them the mistakes, you've not given them any new lesson. You've not taught them how to manage their money. But you've told them, this is what I did and I didn't become as wealthy as I wanted. Yeah. So don't make these mistakes. If they don't make your mistakes, they are 50% in a good in way a good, to be able yeah, to in a good position. You understand? Yeah, so take them about the mistakes, yep. right? Yeah. So the next point we have here for things we wish we knew before becoming adults is mm-hmm. time management is crucial. Time management. See, balancing life, mm-hmm. balancing work, personal. Mm-hmm. See, you have lots of things that you're juggling mm-hmm. at one point in time. So you should be particular about the little time that you have and how to prioritize things. Mm -hmm. Prioritization is always an issue for a lot of people. Knowing what to do at what time, knowing what not to do at Mm -hmm. what time. And I think people really struggle with that. Yeah. So uh, we are trying to relate it to, indirectly we are teaching or we are telling our incoming dads and our dads now Mm -hmm. and our mothers now and incoming mothers what they should cho- uh, teach their children. Yeah. We wish we would have known that these bit, before yeah. we became adults. So it will be good if you know these things and you, you tell the, your, your children, yeah. right? So managing time. Like when we were young, if your parents taught you about how to plan your day, yeah. before you become an adult, you would have already developed that discipline. Absolutely. You know, sometimes... I, I say that these things are things that we neglect or parents neglect. They think, let, let me teach them going to church or going to the mosque or, you know, we are more concerned about religious stuff mm-hmm. and how to make our children very respectful to us. But we don't teach them other things about life. Mm-hmm. You know, time management is, your child grows up and he, he becomes an habitual late comma. Yeah. Or it's a truant in school mm-hmm. or at work. And you are wondering what is wrong? Why is my child so lazy? Why is this all? People, f- the training we have from childhood, that is what we go mm-hmm. to become adults. So if you don't Definitely. teach them about time management, how to plan their day, how to set stacks, how to accomplish them, what you do in your work that you think is working for you, teach them. They are in school, they've not started work, but at the end of the day, before they become an adult, they would have had five years of training from yourself. Yeah. You know it. So why do you wait for them to become adults? And when we become adults, sometimes we don't want to listen to our parents. We think we know. We figure things out our, on our own. So if you teach them earlier, when they are more likely to listen to you, then they become the good adults you want them to be. Yeah. People are doing things that work for them. And sometimes you're tempted to think that is the right thing. Yeah. Most of us wake up and there's no plan for it. Like, I'm up. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to work. Mm-hmm. When I come back from work, I have time. I'll just sit, watch TV, one or two things and sleep. That's not how it's supposed to be. No. You should be intentional about every single thing mm-hmm. you're doing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you look at the life of successful people and you're like, how is this person able to go to work? And then they mm-hmm. come back and go to gym mm-hmm. and then have time to read mm-hmm. and do this and do that. Mm-hmm. And they become, see, it's all about planning. planning. You need to plan it. We all have 24 hours. Mind you, if you are someone who is particular about your health, that 24 hours, you would spend about six to eight hours of that sleeping. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then one hour commute to work, Mm -hmm. probably spend the rest of the time in work. And even at work, you should be able to manage your time to be able to finish your tasks Mm -hmm. because you've got deadlines you're working on. You've got, for example, in your case, there are studies that has a certain duration. If you don't meet those goals, Mm -hmm. you are failing. Mm -hmm. And then you come back from home with the little hours left for the day. And you need to do things that are personal to you. If you're reading a book, exactly. Make time for family. If, bro... Like, someone should have taught us. Like, no, really. Someone should have taught us <laughs> yeah. how important time is. True, true. And, you know, 
it's it's our attribute to like the kind of settings and yeah. uh, we grow in where most of us have grown up in an, a very informal setting yeah. where your your parent wakes up in the morning probably he's doing his own job like like my dad is a store vendor yeah. my mom runs her own business, shop somewhere yeah. she's not got that time to write things down yeah you know all your parents are not as educated as you are you have the privilege to mm-hmm. so they don't know about writing probably they you know what our parents do is sometimes they wake up at dawn and then they'll be lying there and plan what they are going to do for they've the day. mapped it out in their but, brain but kids of today we, we can't do that no. you know so they should sometimes they don't know to be able to impact yeah exactly yeah so if like you've we've got elder brothers most of these things are not left to parents alone yeah. as elder siblings we we should, we should be able to yeah. also teach because yeah. we wish we, we would know them now so we, we tell them oh you have to wake up by this time yeah. you have to plan your day show me what you've done what's your plan for the day you know you we, we guide them we learn yeah. and we also impart into them so they, they become and you know it's like it's hard to think that in this generation where the, there's a whole lot of technology that you can actually use to plan your day to set you reminders, you know, there's calendar apps, there's... Pl- you don't know about digital poverty, right? That is a whole new yeah, conversation. Because there, there are some <laughs> people who are not privy to phones. Yeah. You know? No, they're privy to phones, but the features, yeah, and, the and stuff. Yeah. So either they, they don't have phones or those who have phones are... Don't know how to use it. Technologically handicapped. They don't know what... Bro. I've been using this phone for two years and... There are so many things I don't that you I, still don't know about. You, you understand? You get there it. are some things I learned from colleagues at work, which are very essential. Yeah. No. Yeah. People, you know, iPhone 16 is out. You see women especially you buy it for it. Just buy for pictures. For pictures. Yeah. But and then they, yeah. if you give it to another person, that is like a powerhouse to do a lot. You'd of see things. loads of ladies with MacBooks, and sometimes people it's funny people call it and be like oh i want to do this on my laptop i can't do it I'm like i i you've bought a laptop nearly three thousand pounds and my you don't even know how to do this like how much nearly four thousand pounds and i think i'm <laughs> under using it <laughs> god <laughs> the next thing we'll talk about is ooh, and i like this one this one says friendships evolve like people change mm-hmm. people grow mm-hmm. You can't be friends with the people you started with for life. Yeah. Things are going to change. Mm-hmm. You're going to travel. People will attend different schools. Mm-hmm. People will take different career paths. Some of your friends will end up becoming drug addicts. Some mm-hmm. of them will end up becoming very successful. Mm-hmm. Some will die. Like, get ready for that. We, we wish people told us so we wouldn't be, be- you know, kind of bearing grudges no. against ourselves. Like, grudges, yeah. yeah, it'd be like, this person hasn't called me, so me too, I won't call them. See, people, you know, there, there was a time that there was this particular friend that I wasn't hearing from for, you know, a, a very long period. Mm-hmm. And one day I called another friend and we were talking and I was like, oh, do you know I'm with this person here? And I was like, oh, wow, this person said hi. And I was like, okay, cool. The lady called me later to say that, have you been calling this your friend? I was like, oh, Charlie, I say, Obia born alive, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. I was like, this person has gone to X, Y, Z, Z. And I was like, no way. Wow. And now I ended up feeling bad, bad. Yeah. because I, I wish I was there for that person mm-hmm. in that period. But hey. So nah. managing <laughs> friendships as well. Yeah. That, yeah. There's so many things and so many relationships, like friendships that mm. I've lost. And I think. I could have managed them better. better. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes from silly comments or sometimes we tend to avoid people or shun away from people because we think, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of person where if I'm able to help someone mm. when the person is in need, yeah. I feel bad and sometimes I might even dissociate myself from you because I, I feel terrible that I'm not able to help you. I feel that probably I've been a bad friend. So I don't, I stopped checking up on you because I think I couldn't help you. So what's the point in even checking up on you? What would you use my checking up for? The time that you needed me most, I yeah. couldn't be there for you. Probably it's, it's for genuine reasons. Yeah. I actually couldn't provide that thing you needed. But yeah. I feel bad. when I think this person has been very good to me. I should have reciprocated that. But at that point, I couldn't. So yeah, I just say, let me, let me 
dissociate myself mm. which if someone had told me that you can't always be there for your yeah. friends but you should make them understand your reasons and then when you can you 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 do it i think some of these relationships are, that i i lost i would have been able to yeah and yeah, and th- the last thing i'll talk about is that friendships require effort mm-hmm. you know connections every relationship require an effort mm-hmm. there are some people that you can't afford to lose in life mm-hmm. and being able to identify people that you need in your life no matter what's actually a very critical skill yeah if you're not discerning enough to know that these people i need them mm-hmm. You, you you'll be missing out on a lot your yeah. adulthood can be compromised True. so make sure you're able to identify the people that you network with that you build relationship with that would benefit you and put in the work to have such people around because you yourself you know that there's that one particular friend or that one particular person who keeps you on your toes mm-hmm. if you lose them you've lost something good True. so yeah. always keep that in mind mm-hmm. um the next one here is health is a long-term investment take care of your mental health your physical health bro true i i think we we inherit some of these terrible health decisions and lifestyles i don't know who from who whether mm-hmm. from school from um parent from how like i don't know from siblings but i think that's there's that conscious effort that should be made like to inculcate into children that even if your parents are the one or you are learning a lifestyle from anyone with regards to your health Mm -hmm. at the end of the day you are going to bear the consequence of it Mm -hmm. yeah you learn a very bad habit from your parents your your parents eat late in the night if they don't tell you you get to a certain point i wish that if i knew or I'm, i'm just using it as an example so i'm born in a home where my dad smokes or my dad drinks or my yeah. dad does anything that is not very good or my mom does same once they will don't live their life they'll die but at the end of the day if i'm having any health issues i'm the one going to suffer it Absolutely. so yeah whatever we are learning from someone with regards to health and the conscious effort we make to invest in it from a child from your childhood so the investment can be exercising yeah I, w- I wish I knew the importance of like going to the gym or doing some exercise. We are taught in school, but sometimes we are taught in a forceful way that we feel like it's a burden. Yeah. But if we are we are told on why we need it, yeah. I think most people would have made that conscious effort to live very healthy lifestyles. Definitely. Yeah. Um, one thing we need to understand, and I think sometimes people tend to it's not like they don't know but you know it's just one of those things that slip your mind no matter the most healthiest life you live mm-hmm. eventually your body will get into a decline so it starts yeah. like that mm-hmm. and then it goes and mm-hmm. then it comes down we are in an age where everyone feels too busy people are stuck to their phones people mm-hmm. are stuck with work people are stuck with career progression mm-hmm. blah 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 mm-hmm. They don't have time to think about the things to make them healthy. People don't exercise, so mm-hmm. sedentary lifestyle. People don't eat. And now there's the, the issue of junk foods and ultra mm-hmm. processed food mm-hmm. and obesity all over mm-hmm. the place. And if you don't, you know, kind of deliberately decide that you're going to live healthy, mm-hmm. already these, already naturally your body is set to decline at mm-hmm. some point. And then you are now introducing the negative stuff, mm-hmm. fatty, uh, you know, fatty foods, ultra processed food, junk food, not exercising, not taking your mental mm-hmm. health seriously into a natural declination. Mm-hmm. So that kind of, that is why we're having what 30, 30 years people get into cardiac arrest now, 50 years people, you know, even childhood 18, obesity 20, is on obesity. The rise. Childhood obesity is on the rise now. Do you get it's it? I heard a staggering um, statistic, I think two days ago that about 80% of Americans are obese and I'm like, yeah. Jesus Christ, that's crazy. That's crazy. So, Regular exercise, yeah. balanced diet. I think, you know, when we were growing up, some of the things we learn, yeah, right, are are taught in such a way that it feels like a punishment. Yeah. You know, it's about time that parents, teachers, elder siblings, and the people around us in mm-hmm. the community, especially, refine the way that they 
push information to children mm. to make their um to make them understand and appreciate and want to yeah to to to, to live to those lives life. and and to do it because yeah. when it feels forceful when that child gets to a certain age where he's he or she is in control of their lives they feel that now they said I shouldn't eat maybe pie or shouldn't eat noodles or do this or eat this ultra processed foods now that it's it's very you know those foods are appealing as well yeah. those kind of things feeling lazy mm. not exercising it feels comfortable mm. but you have to let the person know that the comfort way is not the ideal way let the person want to do it even without advice um, or even without anybody monitoring they are doing it without anybody checking because they won't have an adult with them for the rest of their life they become an adult themselves and they should want to continue that healthy lifestyle into adulthood if they know that once you grow this these are the consequences that you are going to meet mm-hmm. in future and the the life you live now yeah. there are things that we do now and you start having the disease aspect of it mm-hmm. some something that has built for 10 years of 30 years of your life you can use two years two to years reverse to, it yeah. and you know the dire consequences last forever most most times it ends Absolutely. in chronic conditions and it doesn't really end well so they should want to partake in those lifestyle not because you, their parents or their teachers are forcing them to but because they know it's good for them yeah, yeah. um the next one that we have here is that <laughs> failure and uncertainty are normal mm-hmm. like they are completely normal mm-hmm. life doesn't always go as planned mm-hmm. okay but i feel like we all see life differently and i was i was listening to something on x quite recently and i completely resonate with it is that for me mm-hmm. everything that happens in my life i accept it mm-hmm. whether good or bad mm-hmm. i accept it because there are times where what i perceived as bad actually was good what i perceived as failure was actually me succeeding in something mm-hmm. okay you you have people sometimes give excuses like oh it's not like excuses you hear stories like i was supposed to board a certain car and then i ran late and i couldn't get that car and then i was in another car and we saw that car in an accident you know and, uh, you know you see life you know. life is like that yeah. life is like that mm-hmm. whether good or bad accept it whether success or failure accept it because there are people that have reached so many success heights as a result of a particular failure that happened in their life yeah. do you get it so when good things come accept it mm-hmm. when bad things come accept it if we knew that failing and you know failure in life and you know life can be uncertain and all that we wouldn't be stressing too much about some things really because there are issues there are things that happen and then in the long run some things come up and you're like oh so this thing that happened was setting me up for this we are sometimes so fixated on the fact that this door is closed and we refuse to and and we're talking about it yesterday you're so fixated that oh plan a didn't work mm-hmm. when all around you there are other the opportunities, opportunities. and yeah. i think we we're talking about people who are so fixated on traveling outside the country mm-hmm. it's it's a focus for some people for years and they're refusing to see all of the other you know opportunities yeah. around them i was talking to a friend quite recently who's you know cbti also those things are inspired and they're like fee if i decided to even study for my degree i'm sure by now i'm done you know you know i was i was telling um nana chrissy that yeah so at when when i was applying to go to nursing school yeah. the first year when i completed i didn't apply for school because for obvious reasons like financial reasons and the rest so i had to work and the next year that i i told myself this year i'm going to school that was a year that actually sowed a seed into my life yeah. and my sister's life like my first salary for the year I changed it into dollars and went to sow a seed. Paid my tithe like I wanted to live right for God. That year I had a covenant with God. I wanted to go to school. That was that year brought with it the biggest disappointment of my life. The schools I applied to, the money I spent traveling to new places like taking risks just to attend interviews. 
complete failure. And I was returning from uh, one school where I went to check the notice board. I didn't see my name there. I decided not to board a car, but walk home just to collect things. I didn't want to go home early to give my mom the news that this mm. last uh, hope had also been, been thrust into the bin. So I said, let me walk. And there were cars like pl- uh, hitting the horn mm. on me. I was just crossing the road and wasn't checking whether there's green light or red light. I was just going like like a dead person. I was so shattered. But, you know, it was good I didn't, I didn't go to school that year. Wow. Yeah. It was good I didn't go to school that year. True. So, <laughs> it, it, it happened. Like, seriously. There are things that I always bless God for, for not going to school that year. Is because of the kind of people I met in my life later. Yeah. And even the school that I attended wasn't the school I wanted to go. Yeah. But it was good I attended that school. You know. Yeah. Like because it, of the kind of people I met and the kind of opportunities and the kind of things that yeah. I've, I've learned. Yeah. Because if you decide to trace your steps back and look at all the things that have happened to you in the past mm-hmm. and you look at where you are now, you would appreciate it. Like... Would you would you say if now we were to say let's give you ten billion dollars and let's take you back to when you finish SHS, you probably won't take it mm-hmm. because look at the relationships you've built, yeah. look at the life you're living mm-hmm. for yourself, and so on. So sometimes these things, you know, we, we we are quick to draw conclusions on them, but over time, yeah, you know, you you get to understand why yeah some things are happening. Like um, our time is so gone, and I'm so interested in this conversation. I feel like. And that there are still points we wrote down here that we haven't covered. There'll be a part two of this and then yeah. Part two, yeah. yeah. Guys, you want a part two? I think we should give them a part two. See you in okay. the next episode. See you.